Hey, what's up, Alistair Cunningham here. Welcome to this week's show. Now make sure, before we go any further, you get subscribed. Also make sure you turn on notifications up above. I'm gonna be giving you an update on the deal I've been doing in Bedford because we have some exciting news. So on this week's show, I'm gonna be telling you exactly what's been happening in Bedford and giving you an update to where we're at with that. So the good news being, if you remember at the end of the last episode, I told you that we were considering putting an offer forward. We'd done all the due diligence, we made sure everything stacked up and we decided that we definitely were gonna put an offer in. I put that offer forward for 200,000 pounds and it got declined but I did secure it at 210,000 pounds. So we have actually now completed on that property. The time lapse has been a few months, so we have now completed and there was problems. Of course there was, COVID-19 happened and it meant things like delays with solicitors, delays with finance, delays with other people. It was a bit of a nightmare. However, we're there, we've got the keys, we're now in. All we've got to do now is start the refurb work. So how I financed this property was part bridge and finance and part my own money, but I'll show you the numbers in a minute. Second thing we had to do, because the property has had a load bearing wall knocked down, we had to get a structural engineer out to assess that condition and come up with drawings to get a structural beam put in place. So we've done that, we've been in touch with Bedford Council and they've approved that, they've told us exactly what we have to do to get approved and to get it through building regs, which was very, very straightforward. All it took was a phone call, filling a form out, paying a small fee of 230 odd pounds, and then they will come out and assess it after we've completed it, but before we plaster it. So it's a really, really good result at the end of the day. Now, let's jump on the screen, let's look at the numbers, and you guys can work out whether you would have bought this deal or I'm just I'm just being an idiot. Right, oh, let's look at the numbers for this deal in Bedford. So here you can see, 5 Caster Road, Bedford, MK410DF, purchase price £210,000. So here are the costs that we have uh, to date that we've already had to uh, factor in. Uh, so the first cost was uh, legal costs to the solicitor, Sam Hawkins, and that includes £1,200 of stamp duty. Now this property is deemed uninhabitable, so we could claim stamp duty relief. Uh, so we only had to pay a minimal amount of £1,200, and that's included in this price here of 2275 um, my broker charged me 449 for setting up the finance for the bridging. Catalyst Finance charged me 1870 to go out and do our structural survey and to do all their due diligence and checks on the property uh, prior to lending. Also, we had a bridging facility fee of 3200 uh, Various admin, chaps, insurances of 550 42 559 I also had to pay the solicitor costs for the bridging finance, which was 1800 And then I had to have a separate solicitor to deal with the bridging advice and the bridging paperwork, uh, and that was Anthony and Jarvie, and that was 1291 um, And then on the day of completion, I got a bit of a shock. Um, in Catalyst Finance's terms and conditions, it states that the property must be in my name within 14 days of completion so they can apply their charge. When you do bridging finance, they'll have generally a first charge on the property. What that means is if you fail to pay it, they can then take the charge and they can uh, get all their money back. But the terms and conditions state clearly that within 14 days, the charge must be applied. Now, to claim stamp duty relief takes longer than 14 days and therefore the property wouldn't have been transferred within 14 days. Therefore, the bridging company said that unless we do that, unless we pay the full stamp duty, they wouldn't be lending. So I had to find a further £6,800 uh, to cover the stamp duty uh, so that the bridging company would uh, authorise the loan. So I had to pay that on the day of completion. We've also got a further fee of £350 to pay um, when we pay back the bridge and finance uh, when it's due. So there's the costs that we've had to bear so far. Um, a lot of these are put onto the loan, so all the, all the catalyst stuff is put onto the loan. Um, the only thing I've had to pay is this, £6,800, 1291 um, 449 and obviously the investment I made for the deposits and all that sort of stuff. Now, as with all properties, you'll have multiple exits. So on this property, I've actually got about six exits, but I'm only really focusing on two of them because the other six are, the other four are just variants of this. So exit number one. Now, worst case scenario, if we run it and it takes 12 months to do refurbishment, so we have both the, the joint venture loan and the bridging finance loan for the full 12 month lending term. Uh, this would be done as a single let property, so we would do it up as a single let family home. We know the done up value is gonna be 350,000 pounds because we've had that confirmed by the lender. 
Therefore, uh, I owe £104,504 uh, in bridging finance. Um, on that, 12 months worth of interest is 9300 I've also got a JV partner in this deal and they lent £45,000 and again their interest payable is 6750 after the 12 months. Refurbishment is 25174 and my personal investment through my company ALC Investment is 76500 Therefore, the total amount of money that's been invested into this deal, including all legal costs, everything else, is is £267,229. If I sold the property for the market value of £350,000-£360,000, we would market it around £360,000, we'd probably hope to sell it for £350,000, then I would be left with a profit, a gross profit, of £82,270, there or thereabouts. It might be a hundred pounds or a thousand pounds out but it's going to be around the eighty thousand pound mark i would also get my seventy six thousand five hundred pound investment back on top of the eighty thousand pound so it's a good little deal if i wanted to just flip it i stand to make certainly what's that that's four years or three years average salary in the uk so that's a that's a good little deal now that's worst case 12 months worth of lending now, bear in mind, um, we like to do everything as quick as possible when it comes to bridging finance because it cuts down on interest costs. So I'm hoping to have this done after six months. Same figures, £350,000 sale price, bridging finance of 104 with uh, half the interest this time, which is 4650 JV loan still the same, but the interest is cut in half because it's a six-month term. Refurb still the same, my investment still the same, but the total money in is 259204 Therefore, we're left with £90,000 profit, so a further £8,000 in our back pocket. I'll get my investment of £76,000 back, which is, again, really, really good. Now, this is the order in which we have to pay out. So if I choose to use bridge, uh, bridge and finance, will get paid back first. I do have the option to use development funding for this, for the refurb, if I want to. Um, and that's I can get that there, and that would be paid back. And then, obviously, my joint venture, and then I would be last. That's exit number one. Now exit number two, which is my preferred route, is to turn it into a HMO property. Um, and again, done up value is going to be, we're, we're going to go off the single let done up value, but we think it will be valued at higher than this. Again, bridging costs are the same uh, for the first as the first example, but the refurb has gone up to 40,614 because it's got additional en suites and the, the rooms have to be moved around. Uh, so the total money in would be 282669 um, and then we'd, we'd refinance it 75% or 80%, but let's work off 75%. So at the minute, this is a 12-month term, and we're working off 75%, and that would give us £262,500. Therefore, if we refinance at 75%, we would leave £20,169 there or thereabouts into the deal. Which again is still like it's not a bad deal for a house that's going to be worth three hundred and fifty thousand. It's less than ten percent. So profit on eighty percent. Let's just say we got an eighty percent loan to value. I'd only leave two and a half thousand pounds in the deal, which again I'm very very happy with. However, let's look at these figures if we do it for six months. Again, everything's pretty much the same apart from the interest rate because it'd be cut in half. So the interest is saved considerably. The refurbishment's the same. So our total money in would be 274664. Um, and let's say we refinance at 75%. Our money left in the deal would be £12,000. And if we refinance at 80%, we would actually withdraw £5,355 from the deal. So look, I am very happy with this deal. Very, very happy with the deal. And I'm sure most people watching this would also be very, very happy. Uh, let's take a look at the single let return on investment. So the return on investment as a single let would be coming in at 154%, there or thereabouts. It's not exact, obviously, because things crop up, but it's there or thereabouts, and that's working out at, uh, worst case scenario, 75% loan to value and a 12-month bridge in finance. And then for the HMO, again, 75% loan to value with the bridge 12-month bridge, where we'd be leaving 12,100 in there. And... Okay, let's look for HMO return on investment. Okay, so here we have it. Same figures, pretty much. Um, oh, let's just open it up a little bit so you can see it. Okay, so uh, my money left in the deal will be 12100 Now, this is calculating on 75% LTV and then the, the bridge over six months. 495 broker fees, total money in 26, uh, total refinance back 262. We leave 12144 in the deal. 
Um, the, re the property's got a, a rental income of two and a half thousand. It's going to give us a rough return on investment of around 80%. So again, very, very happy with the deal. Now let's take a look at refurbishment costs. So I've had my builder, I've had actually three builders come out and quote for this. Um, but the one we went with was uh, a guy called Dave who we've used many, many times. And these are the prices he's given us for single let property here and then five bed HMO here. So 25,000 for single let and 40,000 for a uh, HMO. So all good at the end of the day. Listen, this is a really, really, really good deal. Um, it's crazy not to do this deal. I think it's an amazing deal. Um, so if you want deals like this, you need to get onto my website. Uh, join my database, which is www.bettersourcedltd.co.uk. Uh, we're finding deals like this for our investors quite often. So make sure you're on there. Um, uh, if you want bespoke sourcing, you need to get in touch and we'll find these deals for you. Um, but listen, these deals are amazing. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. But at the end of the day, the numbers look good. As you can see, that is a good deal. Listen, if you wouldn't buy that deal, then you know something that I don't know, okay? But at the end of the day, that deal stacks up. It's a very, very good deal. If you wanna follow the progress on this deal, click subscribe below and turn on notifications up above. That way, you'll see the progress from start to finish. I'm gonna try and document the whole thing through the refurbishment without pissing the builders off. So, I'll try and do what I can, but I can't promise because builders are a little bit temperamental. Then we're going to get tenants in there, but remember from part one of the DD, we have a, an agency who's prepared to take the property on and give us a guaranteed rent of £2,500 per month. Listen, these deals are everywhere, you just got to know how to find them. If you've enjoyed it, give me some thumbs up, give me some love and drop a comment below and I'll catch you next time.